Hey everyone, good morning, good noon, and good evening to all who all are joining us today globally. Yes, I am Parth Varu, Event Program Manager for Microsoft Reactor Bangalore. Yes, and I take care of all the programs for the Reactor Bangalore. Yes, before we start our today's exciting session, let's go through our code of conduct quickly. We are all here to learn together, participate together. So. Please be respectful of other people's views, understanding of their differences, being kind and considerate in a way we all engage. Yes, we do encourage you all to participate. Please drop all your questions in the chat section. Before we begin, I would like to bring in Noor, who is our speaker for today's session. Hey, Noor, how are you doing? Hello, Parth. I'm doing great. I hope you're doing great as well. I'm doing good. One thing I missed out to tell to our viewers is, hey, folks, Noor is joining us today from Bangladesh. And uh, a quick small intro about Noor is he is a student graduate in the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at BRAC University of Bangladesh. And she's currently working as a senior manager in research and development department of well-known non-profit organization of Bangladesh. It's called as Bangladesh Extension Education Services. Yep. So this is one small intro about our today's speaker. And Noor, the floor is all yours. Thank you, Bart. Thanks for having me here. Uh, so may I start now? Yes. OK, so hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for being here. So our today's session's topic is building a conversational AI Q&A chatbot with language service and Azure bot services. The title, it might seem a little bit too much, but don't worry, we will be like breaking everything down and get, uh, we will go through it like really brief. So. As Part mentioned, I am Noor Fatiha Tahiyat. I am currently a graduate student at the Department of Computer Science and Engineering at Breck University. And yes, I'm a senior manager at an NGO named Bangladesh Extension Education Services. Currently, I'm a gold Microsoft Learn student ambassador. And so far, I have seven Microsoft certifications uh, on Azure AI and so on and so forth. So if for the viewers, if you need any sort of assistance regarding uh, like Azure AI or Azure ML services or Azure bot services or any relevant topics, you can definitely reach me out anytime. Here are the social media handles. So yes, I hope we can start. So why we are all here? So what is our today's agenda? First of all, we will start with the introduction to conversational AI. Then we will go ahead and talk about Azure bot services. We will look at the steps of building our own chatbot, and then we will uh, go on to our hands-on session, and we will build our own knowledge-based chatbot. And definitely, we will deploy it. Yes, and if possible, we will uh, try to integrate our chatbot with different channels like Microsoft Teams or Slack. So uh, for today's session, I would encourage you to go through this learn path. Definitely part of it, show the link. And you can also uh, scan the QR code here. So I would recommend that after the session, uh, if you go through the uh, learn path, the concepts will be much clearer. So yes, I hope we can start. So as you know, our today's learning objective is to create a Q&A maker knowledge-based chatbot with Azure bot services, and we would also use uh, language services. So Q&A maker, it's actually an incredible service like uh, on, available on Azure. Uh, it's actually a part of Azure Cognitive Services. And in today's session, we will also see that how we can turn our Q&A maker into a chatbot. So, Yes. So first of all, without like before getting into the topic, I would like to answer this question that why do we need chatbots? Right. Like uh, there was a time when like chatbots were not that much available or but still like businesses were running and everything seemed smooth. 
But why do we need chatbots? So uh, first of all, chatbots can provide us improved customer service. So why do we call it improved customer service? Because chatbot can give us instance responses in queries at the same time simultaneously so the customer wait time it uh, gets reduces like exponentially and also what uh like in this way the chatbots get uh with handling larger volumes of uh, like customer data at the same time it improves the customer service like experience and then the chatbot it also gives us enhanced efficiency and productivity uh why we call it productivity because with the help of a chatbot we can simply automate the repetitive task for example uh, if we try to build a, a, a chatbot for a hospital suppose uh, a customer uh, he or she would want to know the, when a doctor is available or when a certain test is uh, happening or so on and so forth there are various queries that a customer may have then in this case we can simply bring in a chatbot and give it a knowledge base with proper like uh, documents and proper information then the chatbot can handle this customer queries really smooth and really uh, like quickly for example i uh, this type of scenarios we may face that uh, for example we have called uh, to a hospital and we have uh, asked that when a certain test so for example FNC when does it like uh, happens then when the hospital provides this service then what happens the representative he or she would call to the relevant department he would get a response and then he will share the response with the patient or the customer so in, in this time between there is a lot of delay so with the help of chatbot, everything can be really quick. And then we can come to the uh, to the section of cost. Because with the help of chatbot, just like we mentioned that, uh, like, uh, if we bring in chatbot, we do not need to have any, uh, like, representative and in this way we can definitely optimize our workforce so and we can hand, uh, use our workforce for uh, like our human resources for really complex activities so in this way if we come to the point of cost what happens is we do not need any explicit uh, customer service support team so we can uh, optimize a lot of cost here with the help of a chatbot then if we talk about availability Chatbots can provide us 24-7 availability. So from anywhere on the globe, we can uh, reach out to any organization of our company and get any support instantly. So we do not have to be restricted about business hours specifically. And also, for example, I like do not need any regular information. My case is a little bit different. So I do, uh, do need to talk to any like uh, sales representative or any customer care executive. So, uh, with the help of chatbot, what happens is chatbots can give us the information that when that particular person is available. So we can uh, like have that information and this is how it can help us uh, to get our queries answered. And also we can use chatbots for our personalized interactions. We can program the chatbot in a certain way that uh, what it will do it will just uh, gather the customer information and it will uh, what happens is it will tailor it uh, like it will give tailored responses like it will uh, based on the previous conversation or based on the customer preferences it will give personalized response or feedbacks and also when we have a chatbot or our authority it will have the flexibility to scale it out or scale in any time okay so for example our customer base is increasing day by day so for uh, in this particular case uh, we know that a chatbot may handle thousands of customers at the same time but what if we uh, we need to handle much uh, handle like a million of customers so we can definitely scale out anytime and if if needed we can scale in anytime as well and lastly we can use a chatbot for data collection and analysis so for example we can use our chatbot for data like customer customer experience customer behavior or yes we can uh, 
gather this sort of information and we can simply uh, like get the insights out of this data. Yes, so this is how we can use the chatbot for our data collection and getting insights. And now let us uh, go to our today's topic, which is conversational AI. So what is basically a conversational AI? So conversational AI, uh, we can call it a synthetic brain power that makes machines capable of understanding processing and responding to human language. So here uh, we may use artificial intelligence, we may use natural language processing or machine learning. But uh, okay, let me give an example. Like many organizations, uh, they publish their FAQs on their web portal and any of the users can like easily get the information by browsing their like web, uh, yeah, from their website, like browsing web. Yes. So then uh, what happens is sometimes if uh, our queries is, yeah. So sometimes our, uh, we can have to scroll through a lot of information to get our, um, uh, to get our answers. Okay. So. Uh, hello, Parth, are you there? Uh, Parth, are you there? I'm, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, hello? Yes, I'm here. I can hear you. I'm here. Can you hear me? I'm hearing some sort of music. Music. Yes. No. Oh, well, there's no music playing anywhere. Okay. So is it good now? It's still playing. I don't know. It's some sort of background music. Very mild. Okay. Yeah, now now it's it's not here anymore. Okay, okay. okay. So yes. uh, give me a second. Okay. Yep. So folks, meanwhile, if you have any questions, please drop down your questions. By the time Noor is back, some technical error, I guess. Prakar says hi. Hi. Yep. Uh, yes, I'm back. And yes, uh, Prakar. Yes. Uh, can we start again? So I'm sorry for the technical difficulty. So we were talking about conversational AI. Oh, so yes, moving on. Some examples of uh, conversational AI can be like question answering chatbots. We can also uh, do sentiment analysis and we can mimic human conversations. So at the very core, what conversational AI use, it uses artificial intelligence and machine learning. And uh, here, I would like to mention one thing. Uh, that is the def difference between chatbots and conversational AI. So in case of conversational AI, it can use uh, audio audio responses. It can, uh, yes, it can give chat response, like text responses, and yes, in many more forms. Like while we mentioned that we make human conversation, but in case of conversation, in case of the Q and A chatbots, it can also use the form of text for uh, for responses. So yes, that is the uh, so in the common examples of conversational AI can be virtual assistants and chatbots. So chatbots are also a, uh, an example of conversational AI, and it is also a form of yeah, Q and A. Like QNMaker is an example of chatbot. 
we can use that. So in case of Azure Bot Services, uh, let us talk about what is Azure Bot Services. It is a platform uh, for a provides us an integ uh, integrated development environment for bot building, monitoring, and publishing the bots. Yes, and it also has the integration of the platform Power Virtual Agent. And this is how Power Virtual Agent, it's a fully low-code platform. It uh, enables us with all sort of technical ability to build uh, conversational AI bots, and we do not need to code a bit. So in our today session, we would also see that how we build a no code chatbot. And yes, it's super amazing. <laughs> so now let's get started with the QED Maker and Azure Bot Services. So with uh, as uh, for QED Maker, what we uh, for what we use the QED Maker, it's basically a community service available on Azure that helps us to create and publish our knowledge base. So our knowledge base, it uh, we can use any FAQs or we can uh, get our like uh, Word document or we can uh, directly or manually put our uh, question answers there. And in case of QA Maker, it uses natural language processing. Uh, so, and in case of Azure Bot Services, what does it use? It, Azure Bot Services, as we have mentioned earlier, that it's a framework or it's an environment for developing, publishing, and managing bots on Azure. So, yes. Now, uh, okay. In case of QA Maker, we have the like we have to leverage the question answering. Uh, Capability. So let us see the comparison between the question answering and the language understanding. So question answering is basically for, uh, from what we see uh, is something that we see from the viewers or sorry, from what the user's perspective. For And what is language understanding? It's something from the system's perspective. So now let us just break them down. So. Uh, let's start from the user's pattern. So in case of question answering, when a user submits a question, he or she expects an answer. But what our system understands? Our system understands that the user has submits an utterance. What's an utterance? Utterance is simply what the user has said up to in the form of uh, like a sentence. Totally, what the user has said is a, an utterance, and then the, our system would understand that the user is expecting appropriate response or action. And responses, these are uh, contained with entities and intents. So we will be talking about uh, the intents and entities in a while, and then moving on, query processing. In case of query processing or like question answering, in, it understand that the services uses natural language processing to match the question to the knowledge base answers. But what the language understanding and uh, like sees, it sees that like the services uh, will use NLP to interpret the utterance that they have got from the user and it will match it to the intent and entities uh, and identify the entities. So now let us talk about what is intent. So intent is simply what the user is wanting. And what is the entities? They are uh, like keywords. They are the keywords that, uh, that are extracted from the utterances. So and how the response is generated. Response is a static answer to a question. This is what our uh, question answering understand. And when we are talking about language understanding, it the uh, response it is consistent uh, consisted of the most likely intent and entities. So yes. And then the uh, client logic. Question answering, it typically represents the question to the user and with the help of like language understanding the uh, client uh, application, it is responsible for performing appropriate action based on the detected intent. So again, we're talking about the intent and entities because this is what the language understanding uh, yes, deals with. So now, uh, it is time for us to talk about how do we create questions and answers. So for that, we, uh, 
with uh, we need to provision a QA maker resource first and then when we have our resource created we can use the QA maker portal and with the help of the portal like on the portal we will be creating the knowledge base and then uh, we can like and the knowledge bit what will what it will consist of it will just be some pairs of questions and answers so there they will be generated from existing faq documents or web pages and there will be like we can definitely import some predefined chit chats from any other sources and also we can enter and edit question answers manually so now let us look at the steps so uh, we will be just uh, covering the steps in in short because we will go through each of the steps in a while. So our first step would be creating a language resource using our Azure subscription. So whichever subscription you do have uh, from the Azure portal, we will be creating our language resource first. And then while creating the resource, we will uh, have to enable the question answering feature because our today's work is to create a custom question answering project. So after we have our resource at hand, we will go to Language Studio. So on the Language Studio, we will select the appropriate resources and create the project first. So the, uh, after we have the project or the QA Maker uh, project, we will then uh, create our knowledge base. So we will name our knowledge base and we will update the knowledge base. We will update the knowledge base just like we have mentioned earlier that we may update the knowledge base with URLs or some Word documents or files or predefined chit chat or we may manually update question. And then after we have the knowledge base, we can edit question answers and then we can simply deploy the bot. Well, uh, from the Azure portal. So yes, our work is just to source group creation, bot creation and deployment. At this point of time, I would like to head towards the Azure portal. And from the portal, we will be building our today's bot. So this is the Azure portal. Uh, let me show how yes, portal.azure.com. This is the URL and from the portal, uh, Parth, are you there? Yeah, yeah, no, I have, I'm here. Uh, can we take a short asan break? Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, let me take the questions. Hey folks, we have a small break at the moment, but uh, before we come back, please ask all your questions that you have till now. Questions in the comment section, please.
Hey Noor, so we have a question from uh, Goldbin asking that do we have a practical demo in this session? You're on mute. Okay, yes. Uh, what's the we question? Have a... So the question is like, do we have a practical demo? Uh, yes, we have a practical demo and we will be starting it just after the exam. Okay. okay. Hey, Bart, can we start again? Yes, please go ahead. Yep. Yeah. So here we are on the Azure portal. So here you can see that we can create a bunch of uh, different resources. We can create a machine learning resource or computer vision and any other thing for, for our today's session. We will be going ahead and create a language understanding resource. So it will be a language service. So yes, a language service that we will be creating. So for additional features here on the language service, it enables us to do the sentiment analysis. We can do key phrase extraction, pre-built question answering, conversational language understanding, and many more. But for today's task, we will uh, do custom questions. So we can our question answering uh, feature, and then we will continue to create our resource. So the subscription I have is the Visual Studios Enterprise subscription. And OK, let me select the language bot resource group. And now we will uh, give a name to our bot. It can be, uh, what can we name it? Uh, Bot. For this particular task, I will be go ahead and select the S uh, pricing tier, and then we can give it set it to any other uh, search region. And the search pricing tier, yes, it's okay to be set to free tier. And now I will check the box to certify that I have reviewed and acknowledged the entities and let's just create our language service resource it will be taking a little bit of time okay let me just go back previous Let's create a new resource group. Okay. And for, for today's task, we can we will be working with the travel agency bot. So let's just name it according to that. 
is the pricing tier. By this time the service is being created, I will, would like to head towards the language service portal. This is language.cognitive.azure.com. Uh, let's, okay, so the free tier quota is not available anymore. So let's just go for or other pricing tiers that are available. So let's go for, yes, yeah, standard. Let's go for the standard one. For the sake of simplicity, I have already created, okay, this time the validation is passed and I have already created a resource group for this project earlier. So we can definitely go ahead and use that. But now let's see the Language Studio portal. So from here, you can see that, uh, yes, let me just sign in. Okay, yes, after I have signed in, I can see there is a previous uh, custom question answering project created. And also from the portal, you can create conversational language understanding project. You can or, uh, do orchestration of any particular workflow and the project we are working today is the custom question answering. You can also do text classification, which will go for sentiment analysis. And you can also like do named entity recognition, which will be like o the OCR problems or like key phrase extraction problems. And there's also custom conversation summarization. So, Yes, there are so many other options. Let's see if our uh, deployment is done. No, it's still in progress. So by this time, the deployment is happening. I would like to uh, show you one beautiful thing that's Microsoft Learn AI Skills Challenge that's coming, that will be started from July 17th. And we will have four uh, different categories like machine learning, uh, cognitive service, and MLOps challenge and AI building. Builder Challenge and our today's session, it will con uh, like have the concepts of the AI Builder Challenge. So if you're interested, you can definitely check that out. I guess our deployment will be done in seconds. And if it does take time, so we will just go to the resource group I have previously. Yes, so I already have a resource group deployed. So let's just go ahead and work on this. So we will be creating a new custom question answering project. And here I have two options that we want to select the language uh, and we want to set the language for all projects. So I would be setting the language for all of my project to English. So let's just go ahead. Our project name can be um, Travel Bot. And the description says a simple question and answering in bot. Yes, if it uh, like if the queries do, doesn't match to any of the previous entities or intents, uh, it will return no answers found. Okay, let's just for set it for now. Okay, let's create our project. So yes, our project is loaded successfully. 
Now we will manage uh, from the manage resources, we will add our sources. So just like we have mentioned earlier that we can uh, add sources from URLs, we can upload files or chit chats, or we can manually edit the question. So for our today's session, I will go for the URL. So I have it on my notebook, the URL. I will paste it. The URL name will be Merges KB. And the URL is as follows. And we will classify the file structure. Uh, here, it's not an unstructured uh, file, so we will set it to auto detect. So add all. So the sources are being added. Let's just wait for a while. So yes, it has been added successfully. Now let us edit our knowledge base. So we can see here that from the URL we have provided it, it typically detected all the questions that are added. So I mentioned that our today's uh, the data we will be working with is something with a travel agency, which uh, uh, can you can book uh, your flight with the travel agency. You can uh, sorry, you can uh, cancel your reservation, and you can uh, do many much uh, much more things. So there are questions like why merges travel and what services do they provide? Was what destinations do they offer? How can a particular person can book a flight and book a hotel? And uh, if they have any travel insurance and the office hours and many more. So now let us just add some questions. Yes, we will be adding some questions. For example, uh, some typical questions like hello. And if a user like says hello or what will say, hey, how can I help today? Okay, so yes. So now you have unsaved answers. Okay, let's just save them. Now, if the, uh, if the user says hello, the user can also say many other things like, like hey, hi, and yeah, so on and so forth. So we can add alternate questions like hi. We can save it up. Uh, hey. It can also be uh, greetings. Yes. So we can also add some other questions like mm, if the user says thank you, yeah, thanks. Our bot will answer to that your most welcome. And we can add some alternates to this as well. Okay, where it is, it is here. Okay, yes. Let me just check quickly that if I have added thank you to hello as well or not. No, it has bleedings and hi. Yes. So for for what we have to, uh, till now, we can go ahead and test our our bot, our knowledge, or like Q and A maker actually. So let's just go to test from here. Okay. Let's just say hi. So yes, we get our answer. Hey, how can I help today? So let's just ask what services services do Marge's travel provide? Yes, what services do they provide? 
So it answers us that mergers travel can help arrange flights, accommodation, airport transfers, uh, excursions, visas, travel insurance, and yeah, currency exchanges. So yeah, we get our our answers according to our needs, right? So let's just try goodbye as well. And let's uh, yes, this is something that we haven't put here already. So we found the answer that no answer is found for now, just like we have previously said it. So, okay, let's just add that as well. And if a uh, user says goodbye, uh, our bot will say, I hope I could help. Okay, so yeah, for now we are all set. Let's save our changes and we will be deploying our bot. So, yes, all changes are saved already. Now we will be going ahead and deploy the knowledge base. This is our Merges Travel bot. So this might take a couple of minutes. It doesn't take a couple of minutes usually. It's uh, usually it's done in a like in a minute. Yeah. Yes, our resource has been like our bot has been ready to be deployed. Now we will go to the uh, our Azure portal, and from the portal, what we will do is. We will see that. So yes, for our custom deployment, we have set our subscription to Visual Studio Enterprise subscription. This is the own subscription that I have from our from the Microsoft Learn Student Ambassador side. Okay, so. Which resource group should I use? I will be using the language bot resource because I have used this for creating this project. So, so let's just use a different handle. This reactor not available. My travel. Yes, it is available. So after we have set our handle, uh, creation type, new, create new user, yes, we can go to that. And yes, the SDK language selection, it will be, you can set it to C sharp or Node.js. For now, let's, let's go for C sharp and creation type. I wanted to create new app service plan and the language resource create. This is uh, something crucial. So the service uh, resource key will be found from our language bot. So after I have this, I, my bot ready here, I will get the, yes, let's see from here. From the managed identity, I will find the uh, okay. Let's see the keys access points. Yes, the keys and endpoints. Yes. So for now, let's just copy the key two, and we will paste it here at the language resource key. And we have set the name and just uh, okay, travel bot. But as we have done it before, let's just go ahead with this. Yes, our validation has been passed, so we can go ahead and create our custom chatbot. 
Yes, this might take a little bit of time, but I hope we will be done. Okay, so deployment is in progress. Let's see if it does take a uh, quite a while. So I guess it will be safe for me to show the previously deployed bot, the exact same bot that we have deployed earlier. Yes. It's still on progress. So here, after the bot is completely deployed, the interface will, uh, will look like this. Here, you, uh, you will be able to download the bot source code, or you can simply test in web chat, or you can connect to different channels. So it includes Slack, Microsoft Teams, Telegram, and, and many more other channels. So for now, let's just test in, in web chat, and we will also like try to integrate with Okay, so when it's ready, it will say hello and welcome. So you can say hi. Yes, this is the answer we have said previously that, hey, how may I help? Uh, let's ask what is purchase travel, right? So here it will give us three options by matching the uh, the utterance that it got, that what is Merge Travel, it matched the uh, entities and intents to the knowledge base and it get this three probable questions. So let's go for why Merge Travel. So let's see what it answers. It answer, the answer is Merge Travel is full service travel agent because we have already seen the services. Let's just ask that question as well with years of experiences worldwide. So what services do they provide? We already know that arranging flights, accommodation, so on and so forth. Uh, okay, let's just ask how can I, can I book a flight? Let's see what it answers. So their agent may help for over the book, uh, flight booking. So there's a number as well. So I want to cancel a reservation. Let's see what it answers. It also refers to the website they have. So you, a user may cancel a flight anytime, like in a distance of 24 hours. Uh, okay, yeah, the consolation fee may apply. There is a complete details and the phone number and the website is also available. So yes, I guess our chatbot is working perfectly fine. So let's see, thank you. Yes, my pleasure, okay. So this is how the chatbot is working. Let's just see the bot profile. So you can upload any custom icon to the bot. I have previously given this icon and you can like give it a display name. And let's just see the configuration. These are the details we do not need to be bothered about. Now let's just look at the channel integration. So there is a ton of different uh, options. You can integrate to Skype or Outlook and yeah, many more. So let's just try it with Teams. Okay. So here is the bot. It's uh, saying language service for my bot. This is the previous handle that I had. So let's say hi. And yes, our bot is working perfectly fine with Microsoft Teams. So yes, this is how our bot, like you can simply create a bot and integrate it to different channels. And you can also customize it with your own, like your very own personal data or, or anything. And yes, you will be good to go. So here are certain references that you may look at. And we are all done for today. 
Thank you. Uh, if you have any question, I would like to answer them. So in the chats, I think you can see the questions, Noor. Can you pick those questions? I'll bring it up on the screen. Hi. Okay. Okay. So uh, Bala Bhaskar, hi. And so, okay. So yes, there is a question that can I connect this bot to WhatsApp API Cloud? Uh, yeah, there is, you can see from here, the channels they uh, like they support are Alexa and Direct Line, Facebook Line and many more. But so the option, uh, the thing you say that WhatsApp API Cloud, it's still not available, but I hope it will be configure a bot to run on one or more channel. You can run it on one or more channel, but uh, they still do not uh, offer WhatsApp API Cloud. So, yes. Uh, so, Another question is, is it possible to use documentation that is available online to be used as a knowledge base for a Q&A bot? Definitely. You can use any of the documentation or you can use the FAQ documents specifically on, on the web portal that uh, different websites have. So you can definitely check those out. can use this, them as a knowledge base, but you have to see if there are structured document or unstructured. So uh, after uploading it as a knowledge base, you can definitely go ahead and fine tune the questions. Mm. So Chemistry Tech is saying, wow, that's amazing. Thank you very much. QA Maker is not deprecated. I actually do not get the question. <laughs> OK. Let I don't know. What do you mean by deprecated? Hmm. I don't think that it is deprecated. And what are the file format for documents? So there is no perf uh, like uh, uh, straight uh, restricted file format for the documents, you can uh, use any of the formats, but uh, remember that would be that is supposed to be a question and the answer. A question and the answer that is the like uh, common type, but uh, you can also use unstructured documents as well. And there was another question: Do we have practical demo? Yes, we had a practical demo. I hope it helped. Does the language service check for biased, biased questions or answer to get? No, at this particular stage, it doesn't look for biased questions or answer to generate the knowledge base. It simply takes the questions and the answer. There, uh, like it doesn't check for any bias. But yes. Microsoft suggests using uh, Language Studio instead of q and Maker. So in uh, like to use, uh, you will be uh, deploying the bot using the bot services, which will be on the Azure portal. And as for the Language Studio, you use it to create the q and Maker. So you cannot use, like you cannot make the q and Maker outside of the Language Studio. So yes, Microsoft suggests to use Language Studio to make the QA Maker. And after you have the QA Maker ready, you can simply uh, like deploy it using the Azure portal. Yes. 
I hope that answers the question. If you have any more question, please make sure to drop it in the chat section. Noor, meanwhile, we have the questions I'd like to share our today's uh, Learn Module link. So, do, 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 do. I have it handy. Yeah. Okay, should, should I share the link? Yeah, I'd like to share it in the comment section. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that would be great. Yes. Here it is. I would definitely suggest every one of uh, the viewers we have here to go through the link. Uh, every of the you can go through the concepts in a very detailed manner, and I guess it will help a lot. Yep. And final call to ask questions. Do we have any more questions coming up, or we call it for a wrap? I guess there is no more questions for today. Okay. But it was really fun. There was very, like, very uh, good questions today. Yeah. And okay, so let's call for a wrap. Okay, thank you, thank you, Noor. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for all your time. Thank you, viewers, for joining us today. And yes, please do reach out to Noor on our social platforms if you all have, have uh, questions. Yes, I think uh, we have a question. Yeah. Also, what about MAL content? What, uh, what's MAL content in the URL provided? Had that question. I'm not sure what it is mean by ML content, but uh, yes, you uh, you can provide URL to specific uh, FAQ sections or any other websites from where you want to fetch the answer. Oh, malware or bad language. Uh, it's yep. not recommended. Yes, malicious. Yes, now I get that. So yes, um, you can use that, but it's not recommended. But because uh, there will be no bias checking, so it's definitely not recommended to use malicious or bad language uh, contents for while training the bot. I guess I guess it's uh, that's it, Mark. And yes, we call for a wrap now. Thank you, Lalit. Thank you, Goldwyn. Thank you, Noor. Thank you, everyone, for joining us today. And yes, thanks for See having you again. me. Yeah. Okay. Welcome. Yes. Goodbye.